Welcome to Excel cast number seven, and this is part four in our series on management account templates. Okay, so in our last video, we had looked at the sum ifs formula and how to build the sum ifs formula to include or exclude different figures we wanted. In our next section of, of our, in, our, in this video, we're going to look at totals and subtotals. Okay. From what we've done the last day, I've continued to build the template. I've added in a cost of sales and I've added in overheads. Again, you can customize it to whatever you like. So let's just see how do we get these figures in. So let's remove these first of all. Okay, if we go back, where did the figures come from? We're using the sum if for ifs formula. So the beauty of the sum is formula and of building a formula that's robust, locking and anchoring the with reference with with the dollar sign properly is we can use this over and over again. So we'll, we'll highlight the first three here and we can use these everywhere here. So we can highlight these, go control V and we have it bringing in our totals and control V. Oops, highlight the whole lot of the rows we want. So control V. And we can see it's brought in all the totals by just simply costing and copying and pasting our formula. Okay, so totals. We need our totals. So how do we get totals? My preference is using the subtotal formula. However, for this kind of spreadsheet, depending on the size of your accounting department, there may be a number of people working on it in, in the accounting department. Also, depending on your data, data source, where you get your data from, how it comes in sometimes it comes in as debits and credits in two columns sometimes it comes in as pluses and minuses by using if we were to use subtotals we would have to show these figures as minuses now we could format the cells to show these my these cells even though they're minuses to exclude a minus symbol or exclude brackets however for simplicity's sake we're just going to stick with a simple sum formula Okay, so let's look at how we build a sum formula. Some people build it in a ver very poorly, which should never ever be used. So let's give a first example, and this example should never be used in real life. So you go to plus that cell, plus the second cell, plus the third cell, plus the fourth cell. That is a, hor a, hor a horrendous formula and should never ever be used. And we will sh show you a number of reasons why it shouldn't be used. Okay, another way people will build the formula is they'll highlight the cells that want to sum and they will go to the menu, click on the sum icon and there we go. And it throws in a sum formula, which is the formula we're looking for. A quicker way of doing that, again, if we hover over the sum formula, we will see the help box that appears sum and in brackets alt plus equals, which is the shortcut. So if we delete that formula and we press and hold Alt on the keyboard and then press the key, do a keystroke on the equals button, we'll see it is automatically inserted the sum formula, which is what we want. You can also type out the sum formula equals sum and arrow key up, arrow up, arrow up, the colon, D56, arrow up once and enter. So you can, you can also type it in. We'll copy it across to the last lap. Okay, first first and foremost, let me show you what can go wrong. Okay, so we have our cells, we have our sums, everything looks okay. So let's, but we've run out of rows. We want to add in another sales heading. So let's go in, we'll add in a row. And we'll add in a second row because we want to add in a butcher. And sports where sports okay so we've added in arena two but at the moment we we don't have any figures for a butcher but we, so we, we have a total of 100 for sports and 100 for sports so what do we see our subtotals or our totals haven't updated by inserting rows it's lost the pattern it hasn't been able to keep the formula correct Let's type in 100 into this one here. And again, we can see we have a problem. How do we overcome this problem? Well, let's go back a few steps. 
Okay. What we need to do is we need to build a formula that will automatically include the range from this cell here to a cell that's one above the total. So let's try and build it. So first of all, first of all, we'll just put in a simple sum formula. And what we need to do is, well, it's always going. To, we always want it to start on e fifty six, and we don't necessarily want it to be e fifty nine. So let's build a dynamic formula in here that will change as we insert rows. So the best formula for doing this, or the best formula which I know for doing this, is the offset formula. So let's start with an offset formula. Offset, so we can see it's bringing it in here. So let's go to tab, to reference. So what's the reference? The reference is the cell that we're in. So offset the cell that we're in, and we want to go one row above it. So minus the number of rows, so minus one, because we're going above. If we're going to cells below it, we will go just put in one or two. But we're going to cells above, so we need to put in a minus. So the columns, are we going left, or are we going right, or are we staying where we are? So we're staying where we are, so we could either leave it blank, or we'll put in a zero. The height and the width in this instance are not is not relevant. So let's close off that formula, and let's close off the sum formula, and press return. So again, we can see we have our 400. So let's add in another two rows again. So we had butcher, and we had sports. Okay, 100. Okay, our formula hasn't updated. 100, our formula hasn't updated. And 100, hey presto, our formula has updated. So let's look at this formula just in a little bit more detail. So we can see it's going from E56 down to the formula itself using the offset. And the offset is the formula itself is the cell itself that's in minus one, so one row above. So no matter how many rows we insert, it'll always the sum total, the sub, sum will always be one row above. Okay, so let's see how we apply that to our spreadsheet. Okay, so in the spreadsheet here we have our sub, our sum for our total sales. So you can see we have the offset into it, built into it. Okay, cost of sales, we have our offset built in and our overheads, total overheads. Okay, so that's that's pretty much it for our sum total. We'll do a little bit of formatting ourselves now here. So we want, instead of 1200 without the commas, we want to show the commas in. And for the minus here, we want to show brackets. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I want to have a format that works across all my spreadsheets. Okay, so what we will do is we have our cell styles. So we have two cell styles. We have cell sty a cell style for comma and a cell style for comma without any decimal points. So let's modify this one. Modify, format, custom. And... We don't want a minus, delete the minus, but we do want a bracket. So we'll put in a bracket, open bracket, and close bracket. And make sure we can fill that, see that? Hit OK on that. And again, format to see what we've done. And OK. And now let's apply this, uh, this form, what we have format. Okay, so we've clicked, we've hit cell, and we've applied it. Now, our formatting is much neater and much easier to read. So that's it for part four of our management account templates. In part five of our management account templates, we're going to get a little bit more complex, and we're going to look at building a formula to pull in our totals for different months. What we will we will have to look at how we get our data to start with, and this will be determined by the underlying accounting platform that we're operating from, be it Sage, be it Oracle, be it SAP. We have to look at our SQL. We'll have to look at our underlying data data form that we're data basis, and see how we can pull in the, the information from the database. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to my channel. And in part five, we will look at 
building uh, our data our building in formula building in a data source to automatically update our accounts.